Hello, this is continuation of section 20 of Doctrine and Covenants. We'll be starting in verse 38. We just went over the qualifications for baptism. Now, um, these are all priesthood offices right here. And of course, members of the church can be anyone. Um, and we're going to go through the duty here uh, concerning church organization. The duty of the elders, priests, teachers, deacons, and members of the church of Christ. An apostle is an elder, and it is his calling to baptize and to ordain other elders, priests, teachers, and deacons. I think and there's only so many apostles, yet his primary objective is to love of, of our Heavenly Father for everyone and to administer bread and wine. We use water now. We'll, we'll get to that later. The emblems of the flesh and blood of Christ, just as Jesus administered um, among his disciples before his, before his death. And to confirm those who are baptized into the church by the laying on of hands for the baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost, according to the scriptures. After one is baptized, they receive the Holy Ghost by someone who has the priesthood. And they have to be at least an elder because of the um, because there are two priesthoods, the Aaronic priesthood and the Melchizedek priesthood. The Aaronic priesthood um, was given um, through Joseph, sorry, not Joseph, through John the Baptist to Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery. And that's the authority to baptize. While the Melchizedek priesthood was given by Peter, James, and John as heavenly messengers. And it's the power to give the baptism of fire, which is more metaf which is pretty metaphorical, and it means receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, meaning it can be a constant companion. And you have to have the Melchizedek priesthood in order to do this. And we'll see this later. According to the scriptures. This is in the New Testament as well as in the Book of Mormon. That they did this. And to teach, expound, exhort, baptize, and watch over the church. To confirm the church by the laying on of the hands and the giving of the Holy Ghost. And to take the lead of all meetings. The elders are conduct the meetings as they are led by the Holy Ghost. According to the commandments and revelations of God. The priest's duty is to preach teach, expound, exhort, and baptize, and administer the sacrament, and to visit the house of each member and exhort them to pray vocally and in secret and attend to all family duties. And he may also ordain other priests, teachers, and deacons. He is to take the lead of meetings when there is no elder present, but when there is an elder present, he is only to preach, teach, expound, exhort, and baptize, and visit the house of each member, exhorting them to pray vocally and in secret and attend to all family duties. I think it's important it's always important to pray. And to do that as a family as well as in private. Because the Lord always hears prayers. It's important to be a good parent, I guess, and um, be a good member of your family. So that's why the priest exhorts them. In all these duties, the priest is to assist the elder if occasion requires. The teacher's duty is to watch over the church always, and be with and strengthen them, and see that there is no iniquity in the church, neither hardness with each other, neither lying, backbiting, nor evil speaking. And see that the church meet together often, and also see that all the members do their duty. Of course, there are see no iniquities in the church, they have to do it themselves. There's always a bit of responsibility with these priesthood callings. And it is to take the lead of meetings in the absence of the elder or priest, and it is to be assisted always in all of this duties in the church by the deacons if occasion requires but neither teachers nor deacons let's say nor nor deacons have authority to baptize administer the sacrament or lay on hands they are however to warn expound exhort and teach and invite all to come unto christ as the missionary for a savior has his arms open for everyone doesn't matter what you did what you um who you are, who you lived, who your, what your uh, traditions are. He, div he wants all to, to come into Christ or come into him and to exercise faith and repentance and show that faith by being baptized and all these things. I'm very thankful that he shows his love unto all his children. Every elder, priest, teacher, or deacon is to be ordained by the power of the Holy Ghost, which is in the one who ordains him. You need to have this priesthood authority. 
The several elders composing this Church of Christ are to meet in conference once in three months, or from time to time as said a conference shall direct or appoint. And said conferences are to do whatever church business is necessary to be done at the time. The elders are to receive their licenses from other elders by vote to the church in which they belong or from the conferences. Each priest, teacher, or deacon who is ordained by a priest may take a certificate with him at the time, which certificate when presented to an elder shall entitle him to a license, shall authorize him to perform the duties of his calling, or he may receive it from a conference. No person is to be ordained to any office in this church, where there is a regular or regularly organized branch of the same, without the vote of that church. And this vote um, isn't like a, a similar isn't similar to a political vote, but it's just a sustaining vote. Um, to show that the the members of that branch or ward um, say that hey we we support this um, this man or or if it's a calling this woman in uh, in their calling. But the presiding elders, traveling bishops, high counselors, high priests, and elders may have the privilege of ordaining where there is no branch of the church that a vote may be called. Every president of the high priesthood or presiding elder. Bishop, High Counselor, and High Priest is ordained by the direction of a High Council or General Conference. All right, now these are the duties of the members after they're received by baptism. The elders or priests are to have a sufficient time to expound all things concerning the Church of Christ to the understanding previous to their partaking of the sacrament and being confirmed by the laying on of hands of the elders so that all things may be done in order. All things may be done in order. Yep, I mean, before you can be baptized and receive the Holy Ghost, because by doing so you become a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, you, you, I think you would want to know what that church is all about, understand what we believe concerning the restoration of the gospel, the what the gospel, what we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ is, and the plan of salvation, and the things that we, um, the importance of temples and sealing ordinances so that our families can be together. And the members uh, shall manifest before the church and also before the elders by a godly walk and conversation that they are worthy of it, that there may be works and faith agreeable to the holy scriptures, walking in holiness before the Lord. Every member of the church of Christ having children is to bring them unto the elders before the church, or to lay their hands upon them in the name of Jesus Christ and bless them in his name. This isn't a saving ordinance, of course, because, um, well, it says right here, no one can be received in received into the church of Christ unless he has arrived into the years of accountability before God and is capable of repentance. So this blessing doesn't make them a member of the church, but when they're accountable, which we believe to be the age of eight, as has been revealed, um, then they can be um, baptized as they are capable when they're capable of repentance. And I think that's important to to note that through the atonement of Christ, children are made alive in him, and that um, he's not going to save one child because of baptism and, a, and another young child because he didn't have baptism. No, that would make him a, a very unfair God, but he's very fair. Even so fair that if we didn't have the opportunity, like at all, to be baptized, then we have the opportunity in the next life. Because in the temples, we do baptisms for those that are dead. However, if they have the opportunity, they should, they should do it. Because the disposition that they will have in this life will continue with them in the next. So they need to be willing to follow God. And repentance is possible there as well as here. Baptism is to be administered in the following manner unto all those who repent. So this is how, how we are baptized. Sorry, just formatting. <laughs> a person who is called of God and has authority from Jesus Christ to baptize shall go down into the water with the person who has presented himself or herself for baptism and shall say, calling him or her by name, having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then she, he shall immerse him or her in the water and come forth again out of the water. Now this baptism by immersion is important because it's the way that God commanded us to do it, by someone who has authority. And um, and it represents the, the death of our old life and the beginning of a new life 
free of our or a new life, um, willing to follow Jesus Christ. And um, there's also a similitude of um, the physical death and our resurrection, which is also possible through the atonement of Christ. I think those are excellent. Excellent symbolisms should be shown by baptism. And the Lord knew this way before we did. <laughs> it's expedient that the church meet together often to partake of bread and wine in the remembrance of the Lord Jesus. And the elder or priest shall administer it, and after this manner shall he uh, administer it. He shall kneel with the church and call upon the Father in solemn prayer, saying, So this is the bread. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son. And witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, and they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him and keep his commandments which he has given them, that they may always have a spirit to be with them. Amen. And when you eat the sacrament, is, when you partake of the sacrament uh, righteously, we are renewing our baptismal covenants. So this sacramental prayer is really showing what our baptismal covenants are. They are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, because we're speaking of with Father, the name of Christ. And always remember him and keep his commandments. We may always have his spirit. So we do all those things and we will always have his spirit, the Holy Ghost, to be with us. I think that's excellent. The manner of administering the wine, you shall take the cup also and say, and we don't use wine anymore. Um, you can read section 29 of Doctrine and Covenants to see why that is. Um, mainly it's just, yeah. <laughs> Uh, wine kind of is a different. It's not just pure grape, pure wine of the of the of the vine, I guess, anymore. But um, anyway, we don't use wine anymore because if you whatever you use, it doesn't. You don't even have to use bread if you don't have it. Whatever you use, as long as you do it in all holiness of heart, and you think of the body of Jesus Christ as you, as you partake of the bread, and the blood of Jesus Christ as you partake of the water, or whatever it is. Or in some third world countries, they could use soda, where water isn't widely available. Um, and I think it's excellent that the Lord wants us to partake of um, the sacrament in remembrance of him, because it's a beautiful blessing that he gives us. Anyway. Oh God, here's the one for the water. Oh God, the, oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine, or water, to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them. That they may witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember Him, that they may have a spirit to be with Him. Amen. All right, this is just the last little part. Any member of the Church of Christ transgressing, transgressing or being overtaken in a fault shall be dealt with in the Scriptures direct. Shakira says that um, one, of the, one of the chapters for this is Mosiah 26, as well as there's many sections in, within the Doctrine and Covenants. Um, and I'm sure there's more in the Bible and other places as well. It shall be the duty of the several churches composing the Church of Christ. So this just means the several branches, all the wards. It's kind of a weird phrasing to say several churches, as it's all just one church. To send one or more of their teachers to attend the several conferences held by the elders of the church, with a list of the names of the several members uniting themselves with the church since the last conference, or send by the hand of some priest so that a regular list of all the names of the whole church may be kept in a book by one of the elders, whomsoever the elders shall point from time to time. And also if any have been expelled from the church, so that their names may be blotted out of the general church record of names. All members removing... Uh, moving from the church where they reside, as in they, they just moved, <laughs> if going to a church where they are not known, um, they take a letter certifying that they are regular members and in good standing. The certificate may be signed by any elder or priest, or priest if the member receiving the letter is personally acquainted with the um, acquainted with the elder or priest, or may be signed by the teachers or deacons of the church. And that is Doctrine and Covenants section 20. And 
This was um, given by Joe Smith at the, the formation of the church on April 6, 1830. And of course, the revelation had to be received earlier, as the date was <laughs> was within the revelation. But I think it's an excellent section. And I know that the ordinances of baptism, um, the sacrament, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is confirmation, all these things are restored because of the priest's authority. God gave to Joseph Smith through heavenly messengers as well as, um, well, and there's also the sealing powers which were given. And you can read more about that in Doctrine and Covenants 110. Um, and these were given in the Kirtland Temple. And at this point in 1830, there are no temples, but we'll read section 110. Uh, eventually, <laughs> we'll get to it. But, say this in the name of Jesus Christ. 